1830, the Clovis Chamber of Commerce decided to commemorate Clovis's connection to the Sierra Mountains. In the beginning, it was that, that connection to the Highway 41 and 168 as it would connect with Clovis Avenue because that part of Clovis Avenue was part of 168. So people on their way from, you know, anywhere up to the Sierras had to travel up Toll House Road to get there and we were the way that they got to the Sierra Mountains. When they made the original sign, they said Gateway to the Sierras. Um, and I think when they went to redo it, to bring it up to date and code, um, they noticed that it should have just said Gateway to Sierra. Because it's really not called Sierra, it's just Sierra. But they left it because that was the original. When they refurbished the sign in the 90s. It was because of Fred Osterberg and the Clovis Historical Society wanting to keep that part of our history. And along with the city of Clovis, they raised funds from local merchants. So it was many of these local merchants that are still down here today that raised those funds and made that a possibility to light up the sign again, which hadn't been lit up for many years. The current sign is being held up by um, a newer system. So it's got um, columns that are cemented into the ground and it's being held up by cables. Um, but originally there were wooden poles that actually went over the road and down behind the buildings and it was connected to those with some uh, guide cables so it's it's much more secure now than it used to be throughout the years that sign has gone through a lot of destruction and had things happen to it because of wind and because of many trucks that went through that had real high loads on it most of the sign is original, but when we took it down in 2010, we did find that one side had been replaced with some sheet metal. Um, and when we peeled it back to look and see what was behind it, it had gunshots in it. So over the years, at some point, someone had refaced one side only. So what we ended up doing was um, cleaning it all up, stripping that side and putting a new face on that side with modern um, paints and vinyls. And the other side, which I believe is the north side, is still the original porcelain. Well-made neon really shouldn't have to be renewed all that often. Um, assuming that it's well-made and um, doesn't have problems with birds or pigeons or anything like that, it should last for years. The procedure for taking down the sign is basically we have to uh, first obtain a road closure. So um, unlike the days of the past where we could just go have a couple guys stand out there and keep traffic away, we actually have to close the road down now. But um, once we have that done, we send a couple of cranes out there and um, one, sign will, one crane will hold the um, sign and the other will disconnect and we bring it down and then we have to um, trailer it back to the shop. Once we have it here, it's sort of a lengthy process because we do have to take all the neon off, um, get everything cleaned up, we have to rack the neon to preserve it and we always allow for a little bit of breakage when that happens but we try not to break anything. And then once we um, do that, we clean it, strip it. Depending on what kind of refurbishments it's getting, it either uh, just to clean and polish, or we can completely redo it, like which is what we did in 2010. When I see that sign, I think of just that a connection to history. It's just a part of who we are. Sign to me, it just it's a part of Clovis.